What's up everyone, Revolution Fighter here, back with another educational video. Today, we are going to be learning about cartilaginous fish. I'm sure you guys have all heard of some sort of cartilaginous fish, whether you knew it or not, because they consist of common animals like sharks and rays. Some of their main characteristics include jawed fish, paired fins, paired nostrils, scales, two chambered hearts, skeletons of cartilage, rigid dorsal fins, five to seven pairs of gills, um, and instead of gills, they may also breed through spiracles, but we'll get to that later. Cartilaginous fish live everywhere around the world in all types of water, ranging from rays living in shallow sandy water to sharks living in the deep ocean. Most cartilaginous fish live in marine habitats, but some select sharks and rays can live in freshwater for some or all of their lives. Cartilaginous fish belong to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, and the, to the class Chondrichthys, which has two subclasses of Elasmobranchi and Holocephali. The subclass Elasmobranchi contains animals such as sharks, rays, skates, and sawfish, while the subclass Holocephali contains chimeriforms, which are vastly different from Elasmobranchi. They differ in ways such as living close to the bottom, and feeding on mollusks and invertebrates, having long and thin tails, having no stomach, and their mouth having a small aperture surrounded by lips, giving them a parrot-like appearance. Cartilaginous fish can be further broken down into several orders such as chimeriforms, ragiforms, myliobotiforms, squaliforms, and pristophoriforms. Some of the more common animals include the whale shark, basking shark, great white shark, thresher shark, southern stingray, short-nosed electric ray, starry skate, pale cat shark, and dwarf lantern shark, ghost sharks, spook sharks, and rabbit fish. Some rare examples include the pelagic thrasher, poor beagle, oscillated electric ray, and giant manta ray. Some very endangered uh, species include the blue skate, the knife-toothed sawfish, the long-headed eagle ray, the scalloped hammerhead, the smooth-back angel shark, and the pondicherry shark. Don't litter. Most cartilaginous fish are apex predators, especially sharks, and they all hunt their food. They have a number of organs to help them in this process, such as the ampullae of Lorenzi, which is a network of small jelly-filled pores called electroreceptors, which help fish sense electrical fields in the water. They also use their powerful sense of smell and olfactory organs, along with their great sense of motion. Cartilaginous fish are all carnivorous and feed on live prey. However, what they eat depends on their species. Sharks are apex predators and feed on fish and marine mammals, such as seals and whales. Rays and skates feed on bottom-dwelling creatures and marine invertebrates, such as crabs, oysters, clams, and shrimp. Huge cartilaginous fish, such as whales, basking sharks, and manta rays, feed on plankton. And lastly, chimeriforms eat mollusks and invertebrates. It's pretty crazy how long these fish can live. They can live anywhere from 50 to 100 years, which is... Seems like a lot for, uh, compared to us humans at least. Most chondrichthys are poikilothermic, aka cold-blooded, which means that they maintain the same body temperature as their surroundings. Others are homeothermic and maintain a higher body temperature than their surrounding water. They accomplish this using a strip of aerobic red muscle located near the center of their body which generates heat. This heat is retained by a counter-current exchange mechanism via a system of blood vessels. All chondrichthys use internal fertilization. Males use claspers to grab the female and releases sperm to fertilize the female's oocytes. Reproduction can vary after that. Sharks may lay eggs or give birth to live young. Rays give birth to live young. Skates lay eggs which are deposited inside of an egg case. And lastly, chimeriforms reproduce by laying eggs. For oviparous or egg-laying species, the young offspring inside are protected by the shell and nourished by the abundant yolk. Inside the egg, they can develop from 18 to 59 weeks before hatching. For a voviparous species where the egg hatches inside the mother, the egg is coated with a temporary membranous capsule, and after it emerges from this capsule, the embryo remains in the oviduct of the mother and is nourished by the yolk sac connected to it. 
Organically rich uterine secretions can also provide supplementary nourishment. For viviparous species, the, the yolk sac develops folds and projections that interdigitate with corresponding folds of the uterine wall, forming a yolk sac placenta through which the mother passes nutrient material. For embryonic species, after fertilization, the single cell divides over and over, forming fluid-filled balls of cells called a blastula. These cells continue to divide and part of it folds, then the tissue starts to differentiate into different types. It is sad for cartilaginous fish, but there's no parental care after birth, although some species may guard their eggs until they hatch. The heart of a cartilaginous fish has two chambers, consisting of one atrium to receive blood and one ventricle to pump it. Their blood system is very simple and only has one circulatory loop. All cartilaginous fish breathe through five to seven pairs of gills. Pelagic species must keep swimming in order to force oxygenated water through their gills. Demersal species can pump water through their spiracles and out through their gills. Sharks breathe mainly by opening the mouth while expanding the mouth-throat cavity and contracting the gill pouches to close the gill slits. When the mouth is closed, they contract the cavity again while dilating the gill pouches, drawing water over the gills where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. Finally, they contract the mouth-throat cavity and the gill pouches so the gill slits are opened to expel the water. Rays respire mainly through spiracles, which contain gill filaments and a sporacular valve. The folds of the membrane on the roof and floor of the mouth prevent water from going down the throat directing it to the gill openings. Mantas breathe mainly through their mouths. Skates, stingrays, guitar fishes, and angel sharks can also reverse the direction of flow through their spiracles to clear them of foreign matter. Chimeras respire mainly through their nostrils, keeping their mouths closed. Sharks and rays typically have five pairs of gill slits that open directly to the outside of the body, although some primitive species may have six or even seven. Adjacent slits are separated by cartilaginous gill arch, from which projects a long, sheet-like septum, or wall, which is further supported by a piece of cartilage called the gill ray. The individual lamellae, which are thin plate-like structures, lie on either side of the septum. A spiracle lies in the back of the first gill slit. It has a small pseudobranch, or false gill, that only receives blood, already oxygenated by the true gills. Chimeras are somewhat different having no spiracle or fifth gill slit. Their remaining gills are covered by an operculum, which is a series of protective bones. Cartilaginous fish have internal skeletons made of cartilage. Since there is no bone marrow, red blood cells are produced in the spleen and epigonal organ. All chondrichthys move through some sort of muscular contraction to provide thrust through the fins. Most sharks have a heterocircle tail for locomotion. Chimeriforms move through sweeping movements of their large pectoral fins. The nervous structure of cartilaginous fish consists of a small brain, 8 to 10 pairs of cranial nerves, and a spinal cord with spinal nerves. They also have several sensory organs which aid them in many ways. A few of these are, for example, the ampullae of Lorenzi, which aid them in finding prey, navigation and sensing temperature, epithelial cells located externally for sensing motion, vibration, and pressure in the water around them. Cartilaginous fish have large, well-developed eyes, powerful nostrils and olfactory organs, inner ears consisting of three large semicircular canals for balance and orientation, and an adaptive immune system. The brain size of chondrichthys is usually about 1 15th the brain mass of a similarly sized bird or mammal. However, some sharks have brains as massive relative to body weight as birds and marsupials. For the most part, cartilaginous fish don't have much need of protection. However, they do have placoid scales. Rays also defend using the stinging barb on the end of their tail, which also releases venom. These predators also have a very large body mass and usually some pretty ferocious teeth. Cartilaginous fish are just one of the many wonders that God has given us on this earth, and we should treat them with respect. So don't litter in the ocean because you might just kill one of those sharks. You never know. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave comments down below of what you would like to see in future videos. And in the meantime, peace and love.